and absorb and listen to what the coach sees because even myself when I was a player I thought I did nothing wrong out there you know and I, I didn't I didn't cause the coach to pull his hair out or anything but sometimes you just got to sit and just listen to what the coach says because he sees a lot more than you do and he's only trying to help you and I'm pretty sure that's what coach few is trying to say and I will uh, preface all of this by saying Austin Day is one of the nicest sweetest kids that I've been around in all my years around college basketball. I think that's just competitiveness. It is. And that, pure. That just, it's just pure competitiveness in a person to. Thomas from the elbow over Heitfeld. And Portland State's lead grows to nine. Well, right now, the problem with the Zags is they got to find five guys that will play together out there as we were talking in the break. Someone that really wants to get out there and play. Heitfeld, chance for three here. But again, that's a play where Josh is going away from the basket instead of turning and going to the basket. It's not an aggressive move. Well, it's kind of like what I was saying about Austin Day. Watch here. He's got the defense and the guy looks he stays on his feet very well, but that's a tough shot to make. Yeah. Normally you want your big guy going and shooting right over the top of the defender. And again, Josh has the advantage there. I felt with nine points yeah. and it's back to a six point game and Austin days back in there and we'll see how he responds because he's a very coachable kid well and he's look he's a competitor yeah right he's a little frustrated at what's going on here too Morris shot no good Murray had it Day picked it up up court to Pargo who drives gets day moving to the middle shot is blocked by Jones and Austin draws the personal foul. I believe it's going to come on Nelson. Actually they give it to Kyle Costin his first. That's four on Portland State. You and I have had this conversation too uh, with the Zag show and uh, just talking about 69 percent as a team shooting free throws. Austin Day last year is what a 90 percent free throw shooter. This year is only at 75. And that came re came off his hand really flat. Yeah, and I think being a top 10 team, you got to have that up above 75. I think the standards, you know, are pretty much set. If you're going to remain in the top 10, that you got to be able to shoot free throws as a team a lot better. And this is my opinion, but one of the the absolute foundations of this program over the years has been free throw shooting. I mean, it's nothing for this program to shoot 75 76 percent from the line as a team as day comes up with a big block this year's team the worst in the coach fuse era gray buries the three in transition and maybe that'll get Gonzaga going well, this is a good lineup with Stephen Gray Matt Bolden out there and, and Jeremy Pargo a three guard kind of rotation Matt will obviously take the bigger three man but I think this is a team that can get the shooting going for Gonzaga Dominguez off but then runs down his own rebound. Well defensive rebounding right now is something that's hurting the Zags giving Portland State too many extra opportunities too many possessions and Murray buries the three. Portland State was 17 second chance points they have nine offensive rebounds as Austin Day converts. But I know that Coach Few was really getting on the Zags today at the shoot around talking about how well Portland State rebounds as the rebounds the ball on the offensive end. And we're seeing it already nine offensive rebounds. That's huge. Yeah it's that's a, a team that's just uh, relentless that really goes after it now that you can put them at harm if they miss it if, you, if they miss it you can really become a fast breaking team on them. Here's the lob to Nelson. Great look. And Nelson hits it. And this Portland State team is impressive in Spokane. Bolden driving. And he beats two. Lays it in. Well, that last play that got Nelson the, the alley oop dunk was a setup play. The ball went from one side of the floor to the opposite side and got himself uh, in transition defensively. Austin got poked in the yeah, eye. Yeah, he was poked in the eye there. And then got tied up. Right. Oh, yeah. oh. Number 10, Jeremiah Dominguez. Oh, 
And Austin will go to the bench, and I'm sure the trainers will take a look at this as we take a look at Austin's block and then the points that come. Stephen Gray, the deep three. Gonzaga's trailing Portland State by three. Nelson with eight for the Vikings. Well, be sure to stay with us at halftime on FSN. We'll go back to the studio with Angie Metnick and Francis Williams on KHQ. We'll get you uh, all the latest on the winter storm coverage. I should say the endless winter storm coverage. And uh, there is more coming, I guess, Christmas Eve into Christmas, Craig. So have the plow, the snowblower, whatever it is that you use to attack this storm, have it ready. I wonder if Santa's got a plow in his sleigh. I tell you, you got to start to think that at some point in time, even he's not going to be able to get around. I was going to say that. <laughs> but don't you worry, children. He will get here somehow, somewhere. Yes, let's not start any really sad rumors. Yep. Because I know this is Izzy's first Christmas, and she's looking forward to those. Doesn't care about the toys, just wants to get into the wrapping. <laughs> That'd be Isabella. Yeah, that's probably baby. the truth, too. I just give her some bows, and she's happy. Yeah. Nice defense there by Jones, number 44, to deflect away the pass attempted to Heitfeld. You know, Portland State's shown some good composure, too. And I, I don't think they really try to force things. They've had a couple of possessions where they've made bad decisions, but overall, they played pretty darn well on the offensive end, making defense, make the defense play. And a whistle here. Foul coming on Jeremy Pargo. This will be his first two on Gonzaga. Austin Day still on the bench, obviously not receiving any medical attention at this point. So the poke in the eye, not serious. So we take a look at it right there. Costin got him. Boy, but look at Junior jump on him like a, a down buck in the field where the Coyotes come out. As soon as he saw him hurt and hurt, he jumped all over him trying to get that jump ball. Bolden guarding Nelson. Dominguez with Micah Downs, and now the switch. But uh, you know what I'm saying about But Portland State seems to always be in control mm -hmm. uh, with the basketball. I haven't seen very few possessions where they've really forced things. Bolden almost traveled there. Stephen Gray now driving, kicking it out. Downs will drive with the left hand on Costin, and he traveled. Well, that time Gonzaga goes to there. Well, it's a pretty simple three-man weave. You kind of dribble in, penetrate. If you don't have anything, kick it to the wing. He gets that same opportunity to to get there, and then Micah just went a little too far. I think uh, Costin played good defense. Go ahead and kick it out and make the ball swing from one side of the floor to the other. Gonzaga now with seven turnovers. Dominguez working. Great feed to Jones who could not handle the pass. Jones may have had a layup there. Yeah. Under a minute to play first half. Well, with Junior Dominguez, you've got to jump out. The big guy's got to jump out when your man screens because he's such a great shooter. You got to hedge just enough so your defender can catch up. And if you do that, it allows your guy to slip. And if there's no weak side rotation, then you're in trouble because your guy's the one that's slipping to the basket off of the screen. Bolden backing in, draws the foul to the disappointment of Ken Bone. Well, you, you can understand why Portland State won the Big Sky, why they won 23 games. This is just a fundamentally sound team at both ends, Craig. Uh, I think so. I think defensively, they help each other out very well. They are really good at, at weak side defense where if your man doesn't have the ball, it looks like ball, all guys are in the paint, so they're packing it in. But they have really good closeouts on the defensive end, so if your, your man does catch it, then he's got pressure on him. And if there's a shot from outside, they're contesting it. And then offensively, I, I love the way they run their sets. They're very patient. They don't get rattled. And have not made a free throw, and they're still not taking one. Zero for zero. 
My eyes are getting bad. I couldn't see that. I thought it's yeah. Uh, no, but leading 38-37 and not even having a free throw. It's their offensive rebounding. Second. Yes.